Kutab senu hena senu ti ti ren isha kan dugu kemet. I hope you're doing well, brothers and sisters. Let me check the sound. I hope you're doing well, brothers and sisters. Let me check the sound. There's a slight background noise, but I don't know. It's the fan. The computer fan. Okay. We might as well get to the nitty gritty right now. The title says, Hebrew I am versus Medu nature. No, I did not convert to Judaism. No, I'm not a Hebrew. I'm talking about I am, the verb. I am. We will compare the Hebrew and the Medu nature. Let me share the screen. Share screen. This is obviously the Medu Necher. That's the separation, those two words. Those who take the classes will recognize this triliteral, which stands for Nefer. And we have the two phonetic complements. So this word is Nefer, which is here translated by good. And this is Inek. This glyph has two phonetic values. One of them being in transliterated I N. This basket with the handle is sound K transliterated with a K. Now that gives us inek, and as a matter of fact, here we have inek. By the way. This is taken from Bardinus Egyptian Grammar, third revised edition, page 54. Some people will consider it to be a yard, so they will pronounce it yenek. Most people will pronounce the E or the letter J, which has the same phonetic value as the sound E. So we have inek. Nefer, which is translated, as you can see, by I am good. The funny thing, <coughs> sorry, the funny thing is that some people are of the opinion that the letter I or the letter J, in other words, a relief, is pronounced like the sound A. Ah. We don't have the relief here. And I guess that's good. Here, we have a strong lexic lexicon right there for I. And you will see it's a bit funny here. Because here we have M the Lord. M the Lord. And what do we have underneath? We have Yahweh. Yahweh doesn't mean M the Lord. Yahweh is a name of God, a Hebrew name of God. So really there, he should say, I am. And I am is Anoki. <coughs> and some of you will say, well, Anoki is not Enoch. It's not the same. We have a vowel sound. We have the N sound and we have the K sound. So for the people who like to talk about triliteral roots or root consonant, here you have something. I'm not claiming that the Hebrew word derives from the many nature, but I think it's interesting. Now, I guess I will leave it there. Inek, 
Anoki. And for the record, some people don't pronounce it Inek, but they pronounce it Anuk. I don't know why they pronounce it Anuk. Now the U before the K sound, I can understand because placing the vowel E between the consonants is just the convention of Egyptology. So unless written, the vowel sound could be otherwise, and ek could be uk, it could be ik, it could be ak. But I wonder why they start with the sound ah, anuk. But I've heard some people say anuk, nuk panuk. <coughs> That's the word in middle nature. Inek, I am. Now, there's another thing I forgot to mention. Is it Satan that's making me cough to mess up my flow? We have I or I am, which is Anoki, and then we have Yahweh that they translated by the Lord. And We have your God, Elo Heka. Those who take the classes know about the curse sound, the basket with the handle, which stands as a suffix pronoun. And guess which suffix pronoun it is. In Arabic, it's the same. You know. To say your something that belongs to you, you will have the K sound at the end. So I'm not saying that the Hebrew and the Arabic device from the Medunetra, but I wouldn't be surprised if that quote unquote grammar, I don't want to say rule, but uh, that grammatical event, I wouldn't be surprised if somehow, some way, it would derive from the Medunetra, but I'm not claiming it does. Now, I expect that some people will say, you see, you see the correlation. So it's yourself. It's much deeper than that when we're dealing with African languages. We had a script before there was any Arabic script or Hebrew script. Okay, I will leave it there. Now, I want to share something else. What is it? Here we have Alpha Gasama who wrote, I want to contact, I want your contact to learn hieroglyphs. As a matter of fact, I forgot to put my contact. I just, oh yes, he's there actually in the message in English. So Alpha Gasama, you are obviously a French speaker. But I don't know if you speak French better or English better. Si tu parles mieux français, éventuellement, euh, bon, je donne déjà des cours en français. Mais pour l'instant, je recherche des groupes, donc euh, n'hésite pas à me contacter. Je t'ai mis l'adresse mail. Voilà. Okay. That being said, can we move that? Can we move that? Okay. Now a little sum sum regarding the people that claim the. I claim the middle nature has not been deciphered. Very brief. If I ask you what this represents, if I ask you what we see here, it's a man or a male. Okay. So let's say we lose, let's say the English language is no longer spoken. And the funny thing is that this symbol, this pictogram, is not used only in the English world. It's used in other 
places where English is not the language. Let's presume something happened, a catastrophe, and we find remains, and we find this symbol. Many will say it represents a man, represents a male. And here, represents a woman or a female, right? So we have one man and one female. If I show you this, so usually you wouldn't have two different colors. The colors will be the same all over the square. And you will have just a line separating the two. When you have a male and a female within a square or a rectangle in a vertical shape and the male and female are separated with a line, separated by a line, but guess what? It's the sign for the bathroom. Some people might say, oh, no, 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 can't mean bathroom. We have a male and a female. We were not there when they came up with the symbols, so we don't know what they meant. That's the Walter Williams logic. We were not there when they made the symbols, we don't know what they meant. But really, he came up with his opinion in 1992 or so, and then other people rolled roll with it, including people that, bears, that, that are bearing Cumanic names, which is funny to me. Oh, I did not know that he was like a GIF. So if we have this, it's just an apple that is somehow beaten on the side. One moment. So let's say something happens and we find this symbol. Someone manage, manages to find out that it deals with a company that apparently has more cash flow than the United States government. Some people claim that. But it's the logo of a company. Other people might say, well, no, 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 it shows an apple. It cannot be a company. It's just an analogy. Here, we're used to seeing the stop with written inside, even if the stop letters or the letter spelling stop are not written inside, we you know what it stands for. But other people might say, no, it doesn't mean stop. Matter of fact, we don't have any letters. Just a, just a geometrical shape. have this there's no words but we have the image or pictogram of a phone with a cross and we know that the cross means that the phone should not be used wherever we see that sign the phone usage is forbidden or not auto authorized have the cross like that or that circle with the line going across in the middle, we know what it stands for. You understand what I'm saying? If we have this here, what would they say? What would they say? Well, both the phone and the car. It doesn't mean that the phone is forbidden or the car is forbidden, the phone usage or the car usage is forbidden, it means that using the phone while driving is not authorized. You see? So, that was it for the analogies. Once again, to the person that made, that sent some money, for the class, 
using Cash App, I would like you to send an email to me and just specify the name you use on Cash App so that I can send the link to you. So I would like you to email me. I don't have any way to contact you. I cannot contact you. Now, we don't really have people now, but if you have ever if you have ever received any money on cash app do you have the person's email address i think you probably only have the person's cash app um username for lack of better words right i'm just curious That being said, on Friday, we will have a group class. It's going to be Friday, March 18 at 11 p.m. EST. Petio. There wasn't enough space for the end of the message, but you can see it says Medu Nature or Hieroglyphic Group Class on a Friday, March 18 at 11 p.m. EST, which is New York time. And you can sign up by sending the $10, preferably via PayPal at paypal.me slash forever, or you can use Cash App and it's dollar sign forever. And then email me. I will put my email address here. I need your email address to send you the link so you can get on the chat with us. I mean the chat, the, the, the live stream, the private live stream. The, the, the class, well, not just this upcoming class, but all the classes of Meta Nurture are private. Okay, so you don't have to trip. It will not be broadcasted live. It will be private. So come on in, brothers and sisters, take this opportunity. Keep the comments and the questions going, brothers and sisters. In the meantime, I'm just uh, making sure that I have everything in, in order for Friday. Dealing with the people that have already signed up or registered or enrolled. There's no form to fill. You just have to send the $10 and uh, make sure that you email me 
and then we'll get to learn this language. I won't be long, I'm here. I've shared the invite link. So feel free if you want to get on the panel, but no anonymous people. So if you can't show your face, if you don't want to show your face, you can just use the chat. Okay, I have a little bit of time, but if there's no participation, then I will, you know, put an end to it. But yes, indeed, definitely looking. For these new learners. We have Bill Gates who wrote, thanks for all the info, big brother. You're welcome, Bill Gates. What a funny name you chose. <laughs> I can't wait for Friday. Bill Gates wrote, really appreciate your channel. Good. Feel free to share it. Feel free to put likes. And um, in case you don't know, there will be a Medu Nature class, a group class. So it's this Friday, March 18 at 4, I'm sorry, at 11 p.m. EST. It's $10 for a class. So if you want to learn the Medu Nature, then feel free. If you don't feel like it, you might know some people who are interested in learning this beautiful ancient language, so don't hesitate to let them know about it. It's very affordable. I'll discharge five times as much as I do.
Yes, brothers and sisters, I will insist on the middle nature. It's time to get serious. People have been playing long enough. We have all those Kemetish people, Kemetish people, but not enough, not enough Kemetic people. Big Gates wrote, yes, interesting. Not a lot of people are honest with this ancient language. I've been all the way through Hebrew phase, learned a lot, but I come to realize no one can actually speak Paleo Hebrew. It's a script. <laughs> Thank you. An ancient script adopted from Canaanite and Phoenician. Yes. You know, on Friday it's going to be fun because I will be talking all through with the slides and answering the questions, answering to the comments, and people will share their input as well. And right now I'm more in the mode where I'm waiting for people who are ready to learn the middle. You know, I feel like I've entertained with conversations for quite a long time, uh, many years actually. And um, if there's participation, then I can always know deal with that but uh at this point i understand that uh there's less participation because i'm uh, insisting with this meta nature class but it's more important to deal with the meta nature classes you see way more important and lately actually as some people have witnessed there's usually one or two brave souls that get on board and sign up. So, I hope that's what will happen. This I don't need any more. This I'm not tripping on. Be a gay, are you still there? You've learned the Hebrew, right? Now, to say a Hebrew singular form, isn't it Ivory? Because I've seen Ivory, well, basically the B instead of the V. And I was wondering why. Because when I look at the letter, it looked like the bed vet to me. But without the dot, Oh, I forgot, the, is, it, is it called a dagesh? So I was wondering, why is it not the, the, the V sound? Now, I can look for it. Um, I'll have to save that website. There's no search here. Sorry. Okay, where is that one? I don't know if some people are familiar with uh, Bible Bible Hub, but is there anywhere where we have? Is, is there any place where we have the list of the books of the Bible? Because every time I have to type in the book that I'm looking. That I'm looking for, and I found that annoying. Um, so that was the one.
Tiens. Oh, tiens. C'est de Joseph Story. Joseph. So it's around Genesis 39. Keep the comments going and the questions. If there are some, I will go through them just looking for that stuff. So Genesis, what is it? 39. This is 39. Okay. Um, Strong's Let me go back uh, 39. It's the same with strong, so I'll share the screen now. Okay, I hope you can see it on me. It's loading right now. I'm unlucky. There must be some forces. <laughs> okay. Uh, if he stops, I'll, I'll be back. You know, the, the page is just... It's not responding, so... I'll be right back. Okay, let me share the screen now.
I cannot make it larger. Okay. But anyway, that's in, in the middle of the screen. And here they've put Ibri with a B rather than the Ivri. So I think with strong, it was spelled slightly differently, but you know. So if somebody knows, you know, feel free to leave a message in the, in the comments, even if it's after this live stream, it's fine. It's just out of curiosity. Why did they put a B for the transliteration? Now it's a B on the line, so maybe it, we, it's a sound close to the V, v but um, from what I understand, we should have the dot in the middle of the or inside the bed vet, but here there's no dot. So if there's no dot, it, sh it should be the vet to me. I might, I might be wrong, you know. I'm asking. Bill Gates wrote, studying Yoruba language and spirituality has honestly given me a different profound perspective of the ancient world, the origins of these ancient priesthoods. So is somebody want is there somebody else I want to learn the matter natural? I might not have two brave souls, but if I can have only one brave soul, then I'd be happy about it. It's this Friday, take advantage. We start from from scratch on Friday. So and sisters, you can get on board too. No. It's online, it's not like we are meeting. So you ain't gonna have no trust to do is trying to make it do what you do. You can be in the comfort of your home or anywhere else where you have some connection, internet connection that is. And that's it, you're good to go. I'd love to have some people from Africa, from the Caribbean or West Indies, from Europe, from America, from Asia, no matter where you are, I would like to have, to have some brothers and sisters from many different places. Because I will, as we will learn, you will be able to teach ultimately. And we will grow this way. We will not be part of the people who talk that Kemet talk all the time and they never deal with the matter nature. Language is the heart of a culture. I'm telling you, I see so many people live stream upon live stream claiming to be chimetic for many years. Wouldn't be able to read three glyphs, man. Even mistranslating the shortest of sentences. Ankuja Seneb. Most of these Kemetic people, particularly the French speakers, they mistranslate Uja. They just repeat whatever they heard. And the best they can do, they get, the best they can come up with. Some cartoon scholarship, man. It's beautiful. We can't go, we can't get down like that. I have to get serious for real. Muslims know how to say brother or my brother in Arabic. Even if they don't speak Arabic, even if they, they are not fluent in Arabic, they don't know how to say that. 
there were no many words and a lot lot of them get to learn the arabic What we're trying to write, Bill Gates, it was probably a typo. The language is keen to each other. Where are you located, Brother Bill Gates? Is there any of you that want to learn the Madhu nature? That's mainly what I'm after. Mainly, mainly what I'm looking for. It's only this Friday. Then I receive messages, I receive emails, and people ask me, and there's no time slot available. Here's a new time slot, take advantage. Okay, your guest lives in Florida, but it's currently in California for work. But if you're in Florida, you must see enough Haitians that's Haiti part two. As a matter of fact, I would love to have people from the West Coast. There was only my brother, Mark Money, from the West Coast that took the um, classes. I have people from different states in America, but uh, California, I think Mark Money is the only one. Now, a big case of where you wrote it makes me think that you are Haitian. Oui, ici, mon cher. Ça a passé. Est-ce que tu es connu, moi, ici, en tout? On n'a pas fait Haïti, mais pas au mieux fait Haïti. The way you wrote it, the way you wrote it, you have to be Haitian. There's Nesli Merat, who is in the Bahamas, if I'm not mistaken. That's a Haitian brother. Actually, I would love people. From, well, I said it. West, the West Indies, the Caribbean. I would love for people in the Caribbean to learn the better nature and be able to, you know, have a small community out there as well. You want to learn the Madhu Nature, brothers and sisters? Who wants to learn the Madhu Nature? Holla at me, let me know. Let me know. So we can sign you up, we can enroll you. Friday, 11 p.m. Come on, brothers and sisters. I'm taking the time because it has to be a success. Our brothers and sisters from all over.
and then I'm really looking forward to brothers and sisters leaving comments in Middle Nature language with the MDC. Or in other words, a transliteration because it will be difficult to put the glyphs in the comment section. But there's a lot. And for those who check the classes, make sure you subscribe to the channel and scroll through the videos because lately I've been uploading videos dealing with some of the vocabulary that we go through during the classes. Bill Gates wrote, my girl say, Maman, Maman, don't let it fool you. I'm Dominican. Okay, Jamaican mix, but I know my ancestors to be indigenous to the islands of Haiti. Keskeya, Keskeya. Simao. Wagwan, Wapan, Everton, Chris. Now, Hablo Espanol in Poco. I'm learning Spanish, but you know, slowly. You know, I'm, I'm really, I I'm, I'm into a few languages at the same time, so it's a bit of a challenge. But the Spanish will be very easy for me. It's very close to French, so. They say Spanish speakers learn Arabic fast, I heard. Well, um, from my observation, the Berbers who speak dialects of Arabic, they had uh, less difficulty with the Spanish than with the English. Now, I found out that this one word, um, I think it's camiseta. Camiseta in Spanish. You can correct me for Dominican. You should know the Spanish. In Arabic, we have camis. And camis means shirt, and camiseta means the same thing. So, Arabic is older than Spanish. So, it's obviously something that the Spanish language has borrowed from the Arabic. See, yeah, guys, he's confirming it. Kamis, I said the same thing now. I said the same thing. Wow. It's not a big surprise that there's probably a fair bit of words as well. We know what happened with the, the moors. Indeed. But don't nobody get fooled. The Moors were just Muslims with some black people among them. Just like in the US Army, you have black people. I always make this analogy, it's important. Just because we have a few black people in proportion in the US Army doesn't mean that you know black people invaded Iraq. <laughs> it's the United States Army. Even in the book, The Golden Age of the Moor. Most of the time you have depictions where we see a few black, black people, but we see more white people. But that Moorish thing has been going on for a while. It has faded lately, just like the um, metaphysics has faded as well. Now, the, big thing, the biggest thing that's happening in the conscious community, whatever that is, is Hebrewism. Now, they tell you that uh, <laughs> they make all sorts of funny claims anyway. 
I ain't gonna go over them. But that's what's popping. And Christianity seems to come back. Now, Islam in the so-called conscious community has faded as well. They'll be too busy with Scientology. That's not orthodox Islam, but the Islamic persuasion. The barbarians invaded Europe. All was black at one point. These barbarians that hijacked and created this reinvented religion of Islam are the ones following Mohammedism and newfound Judaism. No, but you see, all was black at one point. You know, I usually deal with that. We love to say that as a black, as a as a as a people, black people love to say, "Well, everybody was black." But time period that we're talking about, you see. I'm stating, and I have stated, that from 2500 BC in the Levant, the Near East, Mesopotamia, Sumer, Akkad, Canaan, Arabia, the population was white. So whoever wants to say 10,000 BC, it was black people, I'm like, okay, fair, 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 fair enough. I don't deal with that kind of date, 10,000 BC and all that, when it comes to ethnicity of uh, populations. And why do I say that? We have the standard of war in the British Museum and plenty of other artifacts that I have documented in a video called White Semites, White Semites Black Awakening. So we love to say everybody was black and some people, just because of that saying, they feel like everybody was black, everybody was black afterwards. During the last time of Prophet Muhammad, 7th century, the inhabitants of uh, Arabia were white people. You guys wrote those are two different time periods and eras. True. That's one of the things that uh, many people are rolling with. So then they claim, you know, the Persians were black, the Arabs were black, the heroes were black. <laughs> Some even say, Greeks were black. They talk about the Manoans, talk about the Greeks. I mean, dang. And there's our website, All Black Everything. Sometimes people have shared that website <laughs> as, it, as if it has some sort of credibility. But I dealt with that. There's a video called All Black Everything. So anybody's free to go on the search um, section, a search box on YouTube. And uh, type in my art forever and all black everything. <laughs> you even have some depiction of Jesus. <laughs> now, Bill Gates wrote, they like to say Muhammad was black. I thought it to be true at one point till I looked further into it. Okay, well. It looks like there's nobody who's ready to get on board for the Middle Nature class of Friday. It's all good. I'll be there. I'll be there probably tomorrow looking for people to get on board. So stay safe, stay healthy. If I'm allowed to buy the Nature, I will definitely holler back at you. Hotel. Now, for the record, for those who don't know, I'm giving Middle Nature classes and here that's the flyer okay so those who are interested feel free to holler at me if you're not interested it's cool but I recommend everybody I recommend that everybody who has not yet seen the video Kemet and Ma'at before Judaism Christianity and Islam then watch it. It has about 300,000 views and really deserves to have a lot more. I just want to let everyone know who's going who's, who's gonna, uh, who's to listen in now and who's going to listen to this, uh, this uh, stream in the future. I just had a, my first Meta Nature class by Brother Shaka today and I've had other 
let her let your lessons by other teachers. And I can tell you right now, the brother is the best in the game. He is, uh, that, that was one of the best classes I've ever had, ever. So if you're interested in learning the meta nature, if you're interested in getting the basics of it, Brother Shaka is an awesome teacher. Get with him, and it's extremely affordable. This brother is giving us his time and his skills, and he's basically giving it away. I mean, I, you know, I just consider it a donation. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody is interested in learning the meta nature, get with this brother right here. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome teacher. And I'll end with that. Hotep Senu, Hena Senut. This is Julie, also known as Servant of Yah. And I'm currently taking the Medunetra classes with Brother Shaka. And it has been an amazing experience. Only two lessons so far, and I feel like um, I've been taking the classes for months. Just with the... Uh, how in-depth he goes into the vocabulary words, um, the construction of the language, the grammar. Um, it's been immeasurable, um, the experience. And one thing that comes across, hands down, is his uh, extreme passion for teaching this to anyone who is willing to learn and has a, a, an interest in learning. So I highly suggest, um, if you are interested, even a minimal interest, that uh, you subscribe to the classes with Brother Shaka. Um, it's such a nominal amount for how much you get. Uh, I know like our last class was uh, over two and a half hours. It felt like two minutes, but because that's how you know involved you are in what he's teaching and how he teaches and how compassionate he is about what he teaches. Um, also with sharing materials free of charge, uh, no question, no doubt. Um, it's just what he does. He doesn't have to, but he does. And so I just wanted to give a short testimonial, um, about the class and the effectiveness of the class. And, uh, all of that is attested to, uh, how studied Brother Shaka is. Uh, so I highly recommend anyone with a minimal interest that you do sign up for the Medunetia class, Hotep. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, which is Ma'at Forever. Don't forget to watch the video entitled Kemet and Ma'at. Don't forget to share Kemet and Ma'at on my channel, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, or other social media that you use email, text messages, you name it. Those who wish to donate can do so on paypal.me slash maatforever.